Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Our question today is from Brian Janos. Dave, watch a lot of your videos on YouTube. I have a few Drake TR units. Drake is a manufacturer, an American manufacturer of amateur radio equipment. They were a little bit of an upstart. They made outstanding rigs. When I was at BYU, that's what the ham station there had was the Drake twins, T4 and an R4, and they were connected to together so you could transceive. And wonderful, wonderful equipment. I once got a TR3 at a swap meet. It would work on CW, but not voice. Put it out at a ham radio store on consignment with a note that needs restoration. Okay, and apparently somebody bought it because I got my 75 bucks for it. These are all tube radios with very few solid state components. The TR series are the transmitter receiver in one box, and they were considered at the time to be not quite Collins, but doggone good. Okay, and they were considerably more compact than the Collins radios were. So, anyway, that's a little bit about the Drake TR units. So it says he will be sending one of these to be refurbished in Ohio by, one, by someone who does it really well. I'd like to know who that person is, just out of curiosity. Now, here's his real question. I have an LDG, that's a manufacturer, LDG. They advertise in QST every month, mostly for their antenna tuners. It's a 43, he said 43 inch, 43 foot Fiberglass vertical I've not put up yet. Now, the 43-foot vertical had a heyday about 20 years ago where everybody was putting them in. There were endless articles in QSD and other magazines about them. The idea was you put up this 43-foot vertical, put out several million radials. I mean, they wanted like 64 radials all the same length out from that thing which can be a real issue if there are going to be people around there. One way you can do it is to take a pizza cutter with you outside, a screwdriver or something, slice the grass, put the radial wire in, slice a little bit more, push the radial wire in, and so on. And then after that, you don't need to worry about it. Now, I will point out that my preference for radials is that they be insulated wire on the surface. But again, that does create the tripping problem. If you need to go under the surface, like to the base of the grass, you're fine. Now, as it turns up, your lawn will eventually grow up and around it. It takes about two years, but then it becomes really hard to find the radial because it is all the way down there pinned right to the ground. I recommend insulated radials because then you don't run into the problem of them trying to act like ground. They're just simply acting as a, a counterpoise. He wants to get an 800 watt amplifier. Do you have a recommendation on the wire in American Wire Gauge I should install instead of what is included? Why not install what is included? The current in each radial will be however number of radials you have, like say 50, divided into the current that's in the antenna itself. Okay, So we're going to do just a little bit of a quick calculation here. Okay, 800 watts equals E times I. Your electromotive force in volts and your current in amperes. We also know that the impedance is 50 ohms. So E equals IR. So if we have the resistance E over I equals R. Okay, now... Can we solve this? Let me solve it just right here. We substitute IR for I and we get I squared R. R is 50. So that's I squared equals over to here 800 divided by 50, which is 16. So 16 equals I squared. So 4 equals I. The current that you're putting out there to get your 800 watts is 4 amps. So you don't want to skimp on the cable because otherwise you'll get high I squared over R losses. And there's, but you're dealing with 4 amps. 4 
equals I, and then you've got 50 radials. So the 50th is here. So four divided by 50 is only 0 0.080. So it's 80 milliamps. So what can you use for that? Well, this gets into the point where you've got to look at strength of the wire. I would do 16 gauge or bigger. Bigger than or equal to. Now, bigger, remember, is a smaller number. So you could do this with 14. You could do this with 12. I usually use 12 for radials just because it's sturdy and doesn't get broken if somebody trips on it. Okay. So that's the key right there. The key thing to remember is that the current into the antenna is going to be the current that you're going to see in the radials divided by the number of radials. In other words, it's spread pretty evenly between the radials. Okay, you can use pretty small wire if you're going to do a lot of radials. If you're going to do fewer radials, you need to up the gauge of that. Now, 14 gauge has an ampacity, that's amperage capacity, ampacity of about 20 amps, so it's used for 15 amp circuits. 12 gauge ampacity is probably up around 25 to 30 amps, so, so it's used for 20 amp circuits, okay? So, and there are lots of other considerations. I am not a professional engineer. I'm just one of those aerospace guys that launches rockets and satellites and does weird communication stuff. So there you have that. You're fine with that. If you are concerned that the wire is too thin, like it's 18 gauge or something like that, that's easily broken. I'd go down to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy a 500 foot roll of gray. It's a nice color. Number 12, stranded wire. I would also put rings at the end of each so it can hook over a screw. DX Engineering for $100 makes this radial plate. You're going to be putting out so many radials. Now, it only gives you one-third of the hardware you would need for all of them. You can either attach three under one, which I've done, or get additional stainless steel hardware. This is all stainless here. And there's a place right here where you can mount a barrel connector so that your SO239 attaches to that, which grounds it. And then your antenna is actually mounted in the middle of this. So you put this down first before you put your antenna up. And then these right here are places where you can clamp this to the part of the antenna that's grounded to get it a little bit up in the air. I use one of these with my Step IR Big IR for the grounding because I've got quite a few radials on the thing. Again, it only comes with, I think that's 20 sets. There's like 60 holes. You can buy additional sets of that. Do not use aluminum bolts with this because instantly you will have corrosion. This is stainless steel here, okay. Stainless steel is not perfect, uh, but it tends to corrode a lot less than other metals. That may help you greatly connect all of this together, okay? So I think I've discussed this question pretty much in depth. The thing to look for on those radials is not so much current carrying capacity, because uh, about anything will do if you do the 40 or 50 radials that they tell you to do. The thing that is important is the strength of the wire so it doesn't break as animals, grandkids, whatever, go traipsing over the thing. So there you have it. Until we next meet, 73.